Hi everyone, Nathan here again with another True Tech troubleshooting tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to utilize floating fields in Adobe Lifecycle. Before I did a video on text insertion the right way, and that's a method of getting one piece of text into one place in a text field uh, at runtime or uh, when the user is actually filling out the form. And it's an effective method, but this method here is not only better, it's more versatile in that it can allow you to use data binding to put text into forms at runtime or as a form is being filled out and to conserve space and not have the classic underlined extra space situation. So if you notice in this sample of a form letter we have the dear and then the underscore and then the colon and so in a typical traditional form that you fill out by hand you may uh, write in Mr. Johnson or Mr. Smith. Of course, those two names are different sizes. So the form designer had to put the maximum amount of space he thought would be needed by the form filler so that they could write in however long a name that they actually possessed. Well, in the digital age, we don't need to do that anymore. We can now use things like text insertion or, in this case, floating fields. And so on my form here, I've got a couple of text fields, a couple of buttons, and then a text block area that's a text object, not a text field. So it's when it, the form is run, there's no uh, altering it by the end user. Now if I type in a name and click send a floating field, whatever's in the text field immediately appears here. Now I can't go here and alter this. No matter how much I type or click, that's static. But it's dynamic in that I sent to it the value of text field one. And so the question is how did we how do we do this? Well I've already got the first one set up and we're going to set up the second one, the last name field, as an example. Okay, so let's examine what we have here. In this text field, it's just a regular uh, text field dragged from the object library we have a associated button. This is just a command button I drug from the standard object library. But in the click event under the script editor you see a bit of code. FLT first name dot raw value equals TXT first dot raw value. And so what this is saying is cause FLT first name this floating field to equal the value of whatever is in this field at the time this is clicked. And so if it's clicked when there's nothing there, of course, nothing will appear. Um, the old video that I have on text insertion, one of the problems with it is after you use that method, it can only be used once. There's Since you're just doing a text replace in JavaScript, once you've replaced the bracketed text, uh, the bracketed text is gone and you can't replace it again. Here you have a field that's designated inside of this text object and whatever you want to make it, however many times you want to make it that, it's bound to this field using this scripting method. So how do we do it? Well first you need to have these objects placed on your form and this is just a regular text object. So if we take an object like this and drag it on there, there's a text object and you can just type whatever you'd like into the text object and I've already done that. Inside of that text object is different text and I can highlight that by double clicking and highlighting. Now here's the tricky part. Floating fields are not in the object library. They're under the insert menu. So if we insert floating field immediately these squiggly brackets appear and the word text field replaces whatever was there. Now, of course, I can change this by coming here and going FLT last name to fit my naming convention. When I do that, that changes. And so now I have inserted a floating field into this text object. And if you see, text info block is this whole area here. But when I click on the new floating field, it's a separate object. This, this here becomes a separate object. I can click on that one. That's a separate object, but it's embedded or nested inside of this info block. 
Okay, now to the code. If I want to go, if I want to use this command button to associate whatever's in the last name text field to the floating field called last name, I just need to highlight the command button, open up my script editor, and then type in the appropriate JavaScript. So in this case, flt last name dot raw value equals txt last dot raw value. Just about as simple a JavaScript you can as you can have in a in a form. When we preview the form, we see that the first name works, and now the last name also works. And so, so you see how this is done. You may be scratching your head thinking, now what's the value of this? Well, in the scenario I've, I've created for this example, there's not very much value in it. Anybody can do this little trick, and for the end user, there's not much there's not much going on here. But when you couple with this data binding, then you can really see the power of floating fields. So let's say we have this big long form letter, such as this one here, and inside of a text field, we've got this entire letter. And it's a form letter, and we want a first name and last name to appear somewhere in the middle. We could create a floating field right there. Rename it first last. Float first last. And then in some kind of data binding to a database, we can create a connection where a field in the database reads into our floating field. And so we can create multiple form letters with different names in it based on the database. And that's just one application. There, there's uh, countless others you could come up with. But the text replacement is the most basic reason you would want to use floating fields. Anyway, I hope this helps you understand text insertion better. This is a better method than my other method, and I do recommend it. Send me your questions, comments, and I'll try to answer them as best I can. And always remember that IT problems are usually simple, and PDF form problems are usually simple, but they're never easy. We'll see you next time.